let's take a look at the Flo Beatles costume on the set of the Flo Beatles movie. <laughs> and uh, here it is, which uh, just right off the bat, I'm going to tell you, this is probably the best superhero movie costume they made, uh, except maybe Andrew Garfield's uh, Spider-Man's. <laughs> Uh, certainly in No Way Home. Um, it's pretty... Now, there's been a couple of Blue Beetles uh, on the Jaime... The, the Jaime... Uh, Jaime Reyes. I keep wanting to say Jamie. But uh, the Jaime Reyes uh, character who's the third Blue Beetle. Um, and uh, they, they've all been pretty close to what it looked... How they've designed it in, in the comic book and all of that. And uh, But uh, this one... Uh, looks like it's the best. They did one for uh, in Smallville. They had the Blue Beetle show up in that, and it was kind of clunky looking. But still, the basic overall look and design was more or less the same. And then there was that test footage they did because they were at one point thinking of doing a Blue Beetle TV series. I think that's still on YouTube. Maybe not, I don't know, but uh, they show the guy transform, you know, or transforming into the suit, or rather, because uh, you know that's what the scarab does for him. So, uh, but yeah, this is uh, pretty close. That's uh, it's in really detailed and everything. And uh, I'm I imagine it'll look even better uh, with, you know, all the, uh, the CGI they'll uh, do and stuff like that. But for those of you who follow my channel and know about my uh, uh, Mr. Nelson Sunday comics, uh, the Blue Beetle becomes quite the star of... Uh, <laughs> Uh, of uh, that where I just read public domain comics. For the most part, when it's not public domain, I just keep the images at a minimum, uh, which is what I did with the Eternals and all that. Uh, but Blue Beetle just keeps coming up, and I have taken quite a liking to the character. But of all of them, uh, Jaime Reyes is the one I'm the least familiar with. Uh, Ted Cord was the second Blue Beetle, and he became the big star and uh, got to know him uh, when I was a kid reading uh, DC's Crisis on Infinite Earths, where he was introduced to him after DC had bought the character from Carlton Comics. And, of course, Ted Cord was uh, the redesign and reboot of Blue Beetle at the time by uh, Steve Ditko, and uh, who, of course, you know, created Spider-Man. Uh, left Marvel in a huff and went to work with Carlton and uh, worked on the original Blue Beetle. Well, original, that's a bit not exactly true. <laughs> Dan Garrett is the original Blue Beetle. Uh, but there's been probably like three different versions of him. Originally, he was just uh, he was a uh, young police officer and he had some scientist friend who gave him a drug that made him strong and he had a, a chainmail suit of armor that was bulletproof and it was blue and he called himself a Blue Beetle. And that, that was about it. Then suddenly he had more superpowers. He could fly and all that. I think he even had x-ray vision. <laughs> they were just pulling stuff out of thin air for him. And then eventually they, they uh, rebooted all that to where um, uh, he was a professor. I don't know if he was a professor of archaeology, but he did go on an archaeological dig or whatnot. And he finds the scarab and uh, it gives him powers. It doesn't do it the way it does for uh, Jaime, but for all intents and purposes, it's the same scarab that Jaime had. Uh, but unfortunately, he died while saving young Ted Cord, and the scarab was seemingly lost after that. But uh, he he begged Ted Cord to carry on his work, so Ted Cord decided he was going to be the new Blue Beetle. He just wasn't going to have any of the powers, and so he had to use his own technical skill and stuff. And you know. It, it, a lot of cool things came out of it. He had his big giant flying bug that he made <laughs> and stuff like that, which went on to inspire famously the Night Owl character for Alan Moore's uh, The Watchmen. And uh, because originally it was going to be Blue Beetle and all the other Carlton characters and so on and so forth. And, uh, uh, but they, you know, they decided they didn't want him killing off some of the Carlton characters and that's what was going to happen in that story. So, uh, but Beyond that, uh, they, DC absorbed those characters, and they all kind of fizzled. Blue Beetle got his own title for a while, but, you know, and, and Peacemaker did and all that. And I think Captain Adam got one. Uh, they all did, but they all kind of fizzled. And really, the only ones that stuck around was Blue Beetle and Captain Adam. Now, they, they ended up in Justice League and all that. And Blue Beetle ended up being paired with uh, Booster Gold, the superhero from the future. 
And they became kind of the Beavis and Butthead of the Justice League. <laughs> so they became this comedy duo. And it worked. It worked for them. And they had a following for a while. and uh, But eventually, it, you know, kind of ended up on the back burner. And then eventually, they wanted to do a third Blue Beetle. And uh, they killed off Ted Cord. I, I don't think he's dead anymore because, you know, uh, multiverse shenanigans and what have you. But... Um, Killed him off, and it, it revealed that he had found the scarab, but, I don't know, didn't activate it or couldn't figure it out or whatever. And uh, that was a lead-in to Infinite Crisis, and, and as a result of that, the beetle found its way to young Jaime Reyes. And uh, that's where they went with that, and he became uh, the, the new Blue Beetle. Um, initially, they were toying with the idea of Tim Drake becoming Blue Beetle because, I guess, they decided they didn't want him to be Robin anymore. <laughs> There's too many Robins. That's true. <laughs> uh, but they, they squashed that to come up with this new character. Uh, I, probably some ideas. We don't have enough uh, Latino characters or whatnot or something along those lines. And may, maybe so. Uh, at, you know, it's, if it was done today, you'd go, oh, well, that's exactly what it is. But, you know, but uh, whatever. Uh, this is what they did, and then eventually, the like I said, the multiverse shenanigans. So Ted Cord is alive, and I guess he became a mentor to um, uh, Jaime, and so on and so forth. Uh, and I, I don't know if that's how they're going to do it in the movie or not. There is uh, the name Cord, is it? And the villain is supposed to be Ted's sister. Uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> he did have an evil uncle, and maybe they just gender swapped the character. To be the villain of this story, I, you know, I don't know. I don't know how to see the movie, but as far but uh, as far as just the look of the superhero character, the, they've done a pretty good job here. It's pretty close and accurate uh, to what one would expect it, uh, to look, and I imagine it'll look even better um, in the final product on on screen. So um, yeah, and the Ted Cord Blue Beetle always said was sort of a that was Steve Ditko uh, doing a combination of Spider Man and Batman. Uh, he had no powers like Batman, and he had all this. Uh, he was he was wealthy. He had a company, and he had his uh, he had gadgets, and and uh, of course his his Beetle Mobile, if you will, <laughs> and all that stuff. But at the same time, his personality and whatnot was very akin to uh, Peter Parker. And um, it kind of looked like I mean, it was Ditko just carrying on with his Spider-Man stuff into Blue Beetle. Uh, but interestingly enough, is Jaime Reyes is yet another one of these characters where they wanted younger, you know, teenage superheroes and stuff. And that's always in the uh, pursuit of chasing, if you will, <laughs> Peter Parker. And you, you'll see this a lot in comic books. And it's, it's understandable. I mean, in a lot of ways, Spider-Man's the most successful superhero. You know, and uh, he says, "Yeah, man, what, what, what's the secret and all that?" You know, but to copy it too much, it would be, uh, well, it would be a wrong thing to do. But um, eventually, uh, you get here to uh, this Blue Beetle, which he is in the DCEU. I think they're going to deal with the Scarab in the uh, the Black Adam film. I've heard that, and that makes sense with the tie-ins with uh, Egyptian lore and stuff, but it's not an Egyptian Scarab. It's, it's, it's an alien artifact and has some history with the Green Lantern Corps. Uh, not a good one. Apparently, they're enemies. <laughs> so that would be interesting if they t uh, provided how successful the Blue Beetle film is. Uh, might tie it in to some Green Lantern shenanigans. So... So there he is. He's already filming, and they, it was originally going to be a H HBO Max exclusive, but now it's going to be a theatrical release. And I'm thinking the Batgirl film will uh, do the same. Um, and there is Zolo. Uh, 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 embarrassingly, I have not delved into Cobra Kai. I know it's, everybody goes on about how good it is, and especially in a, a revived franchise type thing, uh, it, it has a lot of lessons about how you do that. And that sort of thing. But uh, he's become a star in that. And, uh, of course, you can understand he's probably adept at doing action roles and everything. So, And he pretty much spot on looks the part, you know. So, you know, it looks like it's pretty good casting uh, for this version of uh, Blue Beetle. So uh, there's more scenes there. Uh, he's looks like he's crashing into this car. They got some glass scattered around and stuff. I imagine this is the stunt double, but never mind. <laughs> Uh, Beatles 
was uh, trashing up someone's guy. He's got some glass in his lap in mid fall there, and uh, there he is. Oh man, that hurt. Yeah. You okay, buddy? Um, so, and uh, and just hanging out. But uh, there he is. <laughs> get, oh, let me get back on the car for another shot. Uh, so, it might be a little itchy. See, he's kind of, ah, oh, jeez, it's really itchy. <laughs> and running back into action. Uh, and there you go. So, and there he is again. I think, I think that's it. Nope, there you go. <laughs> he's falling into the car. Um, so, yeah, it looks pretty good. And uh, plot-wise, don't know if it, Ted Kord will even be involved in it. I imagine, perhaps mentioned, since the villain is a Kord. Uh, once again, it's itchy. Um, and hopefully it is, and uh, they can finally get their DCEU off the ground and, uh, you know, go somewhere with it. And, uh, you know, just hopefully it's good. And... Um, Mentioning uh, Bad Girl about possibly being theatrical. Uh, hopefully, she'll. Uh, the costume is based in the comics. They did do a design of that, but it was like in that story, it was like her homemade version of a of a of a Bat Girl suit, and with uh, Bruce Wayne, uh, Michael Keaton's Batman, uh, coming in to be a mentor to her. Hopefully, by the end of the film, she'll get a more proper Bat Girl suit, uh, thanks to his resources for her, and uh, will look a little better. So maybe that's the explanation for that one. But for Jaime, he doesn't have to worry about that. He doesn't need a billionaire or nothing. Although Ted Gord, if he's around, uh, well, probably is a billionaire. Um, but he doesn't need any of that because the alien artifact creates this this suit. So for whatever reason, it didn't work like that for Dan Garrett. <laughs> I guess getting knocked around in Infinite Crisis, it uh, managed to reset itself to what it's supposed to do. Because apparently there's a bunch of, like an alien army of blue beetles out there. Uh, that are opposed to the Green Lanterns and stuff. So it'll be cool to see where they can go for this. But uh, at the outset, they got to introduce Jaime and all that, and uh, that's pretty much basically what you can expect from the, from the film. And then um, perhaps lay down little Easter eggs and teasers about what they possibly could do uh, going forward for the DC EU. But anyway, there it is. That's to look at the suit and. Uh, you know, all said and done, and that's that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Um, probably looks a lot better at night, you know, but that's the case. <laughs> and of course, with uh, in the post production and whatnot, when you finally see it, it'll probably look a lot cooler uh, in the film. So there you go. Best of luck to the Blue Beetle. 